we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to show you some stuff and talk about some stuff and then you're going to do it. And when you do it, I'll, uh, I'll walk you through it. But if you go to golang.org, uh, you have this area right here. And I don't know what happens if I do pop out. Okay, this is also known as the Golang Playground. So right here, you just come to their homepage, golang.org, and you click on pop out, and it takes you to the Golang Playground. Or you could just type Golang Playground, right? And the reason it's Golang, Go language, the Go programming <laughs> language, and Golang is something that you often add in your query when you're searching for Go stuff, because if I was to type Golang Playground, I get the Golang Playground. But if I type Go Playground, right, that Google's gonna have a little bit of our, you know, it knows who I am, right? So it's like, here, this is what you're looking for. But other people might be like, here are playgrounds in your neighborhood, you know? So Golang is often a prefix that we use for doing searches. And uh, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you about variables, okay? And uh, first, let me just show you this environment. Here we have run. So I run that, and it runs my code. And you can see that it, it, you could encode all of the different languages in the world with Go. It's UTF-8. So I don't know if that's Chinese or what, right? But we've got Chinese characters showing up there. And runes, anybody heard the word rune before? This is, where have you heard it? Games? What is it? In, what's it mean in role-playing games? Usually it's, it's a type of, you know, the words written on stones, it's not yeah. non-English, non-Latin. Yeah, so it's like a, a, a nerdy gaming J.R. Tolkien kind of reference. And a rune is like a character. So when you look in the types for Go, you will see, you know, Golang spec is the Golang language specification. And if we look at the specification and we look for rune, we have rune literals. Right, and a rune, rune literal represents a rune constant, and it's an integer value identifying a, a Unicode code point. Right, and so basically, uh, the simplest form represents single character within quotes, since the Go source text is Unicode characters encoded in UTF-8. Right, it could be one to four bytes. Basically, what all that means, and don't freak out if you're new, all that means is like we could put in Chinese characters or Korean characters or, or whatever. It's using UTF-8, the world's most popular coding scheme. What are coding schemes? Computers run on electricity. Electricity can be on or off. That's like almost a whole other lecture. Anybody know, know do you know about coding schemes, Matt? Okay, cool. So Matt doesn't know about it. Let's take a moment to, to know about it. And to do that, I need to go back here and go here and go to school and go to spring. Uh, whoop, 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 spring of 2016, Fresno City College, CIT 15, lectures. And that's going to be either week two or week three. All right, computers run on electricity. Electricity has two states, on or off. A computer is like your porch light on Halloween. And so if your light is on on Halloween, it means come trick or treat. And if it's off, it means go away. So that's a porch light. That's one switch or one circuit. <clears throat> it's one switch or one circuit. And based upon it being on or off, it could be encoded with a coding scheme to represent something. So that state of on or off, a circuit or a switch in some state of on or off can be encoded, can have a coding scheme so that it means something. We use that every Halloween. The circuit, the switch, the porch light is on. I can trick or treat at that house. It's off, I can't. Right, so computers are nothing but a bunch of switches or circuits that could be on or off and they have coding schemes. If there is an arrangement of on-off in this pattern, and we're using this coding scheme, this is what it means. <clears throat> we have a coding scheme for porch lights on Halloween. There's also a coding scheme for <coughs> characters, like out letters of the alphabet. 
And so here's ASCII. And so instead of saying on off, right, we say one is on and zero is off. And so we have on, off, 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 on. And there's a space there just to make it more readable for us humans. Okay? So when we have some circuits or switches in this arrangement of order, that's capital A. This is ASCII, and that is also the, it corresponds to UTF-8. They took ASCII and made it the first part of UTF-8. So that's just how computers work. And there's a coding scheme for letters of the alphabet, and that coding scheme could be ASCII or UTF-8. There's a coding scheme for colors, right? So, hey, this arrangement of on-off is this subtle shade of pink. There's a coding scheme for sounds. Wow. And then we build upon all that with, you know, compression, decompression stuff, you know, JPEG for images or whatever, MP4 for movies, MP3 for sound. But it all comes back to circuits and switches being in some state of on or off. <clears throat> There's a coding scheme for numbers. Question? Questions? So, uh... I'm just bringing up something else. So these are numeral systems. <clears throat> There's a coding scheme for numbers. Like we use the decimal numbering system, the des decimal numeral system. That's what we use. And so if I say I have $65, I've got six tens in my wallet and five ones. This is the one spot, the 10 spot, the 100 spot, the 1,000 spot takes us back to elementary school. Maybe some old circuits are firing in your head when you learned, right? Like that's 65. That's how we express 65, correct? This is how we'd express like eight. We'd have eight ones. Or two, I have two ones. Or 42, I have $42, four tens and two ones. I couldn't say this, right? I have 12 ones. Even though really in your wallet you could, in a numeral system this doesn't work because you can only have one digit in this spot. So I'd say I have two ones and I have one ten. And that's 12, okay? Well, the decimal numbering system's the same. It, except, sorry, the binary numbering system's the same as decimal, except instead of base 10, base 10, base 10, base 10, it's base two. Why is it base two? Because in binary, in binary, uh, is by bicycle, by two, zero and one, on off. In binary, um, there's two digits. In des, decimal, deci, deca, de decade, right? DEC means 10. Decade is 10. Decimal is 10, right? So we have 10 digits, probably because we have 10 fingers. Here we have two digits, so it's base two. So we do 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, 2 to the 4, right? And then if I wanted to represent 0, I'd say I have 0 ones, because anything to the power of 0 is 1. Or I could say I have 1 1, but that's it, because I only have 0 and 1. I've on off. And then I have the 2's place. So up here I have the 1's, 10's, 100's, 1000's, 10,000's, the 1's, 2's, 4's, 8's. Right, those places. And so if I wanted to represent three, I'd say I have one $2 bill and one $1 bill. If I wanted to represent 20, I'd say I have one $16 bill, one $4 bill, and no anything else. But now this is how numbers are represented in binary. So that would be 20. You don't have to get that, that's just an FYI. Right, if that doesn't make total sense, that's fine. But sometimes you'll see binary digits, and that's how they translate to numbers. It's a base 2 system. There's also a base 16 system called hexadecimal, right? Hexa is 6, decimal is 10, that's 16. So base 16, but we can't go up to 16 digits in one spot, so we use 0 through 9 and A through F. So this would be 42. That would be 42. And that, the other day I saw a Porsche, and it had a... Uh, 
I saw a Porsche and that was its license plate. <laughs> Driving on the street the other day. And I took out my phone and I'm like, oh, what is, what is 38F in hexadecimal? 911. Because there's a Porsche 911. Right? And 0x is often a prefix for hexadecimal. Or it is, it's a prefix. For, it tells you that's hexadecimal. So those are just coding schemes. The main thing you should get is coding schemes, circuits, and switches. If you understand the porch light on Halloween, you understand how computers work. It's binary digits, right, which we abbreviate. We abbreviate binary digits, and we call them bits. So let me just show you that, right? A bit is a binary digit, a single zero or one. There's eight bits in a byte. There's a thousand bytes in a kilobyte, a thousand kilobytes in a megabyte, yada, 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 so forth and so on. Actually, it's 1,024, but whatever. It's just easier to round. And, uh, and so that's how we measure them. So now you can figure out how many single zeros and ones are in something. So if I had like a four gigabyte drive, that's 4,000 megabytes. If I have 4,000 megabytes, that's 4 million kilobytes. If I have 4 million kilobytes, that's 4 billion bytes. If I have 4 billion bytes, that's 32 billion zeros and ones that could be stored. 32 billion zeros and ones, 32 billion on-off states, light switches, so to speak, that could be stored on a four gigabyte flash drive. 32 billion, amazing, on something the size of your thumbnail, something the size of your thumb, a flash drive, right? 32 billion on-off states can be stored, zeros and ones. That's why the power symbol, I can't type, zero, one, off, on. It's the off, on switch. It's a zero and a one. That's why the power switch is like that. So that's all just to explain coding schemes and UTF-8. And rune, because when you see rune, just think character, if you're coming from other languages. And uh, I think I'm going to stop this video here and then jump into uh, variables in the next one.